Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I have a super, super fun video for you guys today. But first I wanna start with this article. This is from Fox Business and check out this crazy headline. U.S. housing market sees a $2.3 trillion drop in value, biggest since 2008. Now, $2.3 trillion does seem like a lot of money, but it is uh, just 4.9%. Okay, check this out. That's according to a new report from the real estate brokerage Redfin, which showed that the total value of U.S. homes tumbled from a record high of $47.7 trillion in June of 2022 to $45.3 trillion at the end of the year. That's a decline of $2.3 trillion or 4.9%. It marks the biggest drop since the 2008 financial crisis when homes values plunged by 5.8% from June to December. That's kind of crazy, guys, because we're literally right there. The problem is, again, things are so expensive that a 4.9, almost a 5% drop doesn't seem like that much, right? So if you keep reading the article, basically, it states that home buyer demand dried up as consumers confronted the steepest mortgage rates in years, further weighing on home prices. The median price of homes sold in January was 383,000, down 11% from a peak of 433,000 in, in May, according to Redfin. Now, the housing market has shed some of its values, but most homeowners will still reap big rewards from the pandemic housing boom. Remember guys, a lot of people are not moving. Why? Because most people refinance their home and they're not ready to sell it with such a low interest rates. If anything, I believe people are trying to buy a second house, keep the current house they have rented because they know that we will never see uh, interest rates that low basically probably ever again. So that's what I think is happening. Now, I want to talk to you about something super, super fun. Now, as many of you guys know, we've have had some of the worst storms in decades, uh, bringing snow to basically the entire country, which got me thinking about ski towns, right? Now, we all know ski towns are super duper expensive, but I wanted to find out what is some of the cheapest ski towns in America. And I want to outline basically a really expensive ski town and a really affordable ski town, just so you guys know. You guys might not be into skiing, but if you are uh, or you like investments, let me tell you something. Owning a little piece of property near the slopes can be a great money maker. And if you can get it for very cheap, especially if prices are starting to come down, it could be a really long-term investment because you could always Airbnb it, especially if you have ski in, ski out, which basically means you can walk from your apartment to the ski lift. Now, I understand that, you know, it's only going to basically be rented during the snow season, but you can make so much money during that snow season that it might even pay for, you know, the property itself. Now, there's two places I want to take you to, right? Number one is Park City, Utah. Now, this is like the real deal. Now, here I am in Zillow right here. And if you could see these lines, basically, these are the mountains, uh, the ski mountains, and these are all the properties you know that are available now if you look at these little dotted lines these are the lifts so you could see anything around those lifts are super duper expensive some look at this a studio for seven hundred and fifty thousand. you got a house a three bedroom three bath 1500 square foot for 2.1 million and it is a condo and i could guarantee you look at this a quarterly hoa fee of three thousand dollars very expensive now some of these come with um they come with a lot of services right like when your apartment gets snowed in you know the reason you're paying so much hoa is because they have a lot of employees making sure everything's awesome but look two million dollars for a very basic basic apartment right this is again park city utah this is like one of the best ski locations ever and look how close you are to the slopes basically come out of your house walk around these uh, trees right here and you could get on a lift. And that's, it's like really, really desirable. Look at this, here is a, uh, a wide shot. So look, and this is an aerial view. You basically just walk right here and you're there and having a great time. 
This is why uh, these places are so expensive because you know skiing in general is very expensive. So you know that the quality of people that would come here are going to be a little higher caliber and they're gonna have a little bit more money because you know lifts alone are super duper expensive. Now if we look, here's a million dollars, Jesus, wow. One be, uh, it's a one bedroom, 800 uh, square foot, one bedroom, two bath for one million bucks. And HOA, wow, HOA is 11,000 annually. So, you know, almost a thousand dollars a month for an HOA and it's a million bucks. It's only a one bedroom, but you're literally in the ski town. This is pretty insane and it is most likely ski in, ski out. It's uh, one of these apartments. This is awesome though. You get to be here, you get to walk out, go eat in these restaurants, stores, whatever you want. And then during the day, you're up in the mountain skiing. So, so awesome. But, but as you can see, Park City is really for the rich, like the really rich. Now you can go and Airbnb it, no doubt. But at the same time, I mean, if you wanna buy here, you're gonna have to have a lot of cash. Anything that's ski in, ski out here, it's all over a million bucks. Let's see where four million gets you. This is pretty insane. It's a 2,000 square foot condo, uh, three bedroom, four bath for four million bucks. And the HOA, wow, quarterly of $6,400. That is insane. $24,000 a year in HOA fees. So what do you get? Probably an insane you know, uh, service, pools, jacuzzis, whatever you're asking for. And look where the ski lift is. It literally picks you up in your house. Very, very expensive. Only, you know, like I said, for the rich, rich, rich. Four million bucks for 2,000 square foot. Uh, and it's, it's an apartment, right? So you can see, but you know, it's walking distance to a lot of things and it's pretty awesome. So, okay, a lot of us are saying, okay, I can't afford Park City, obviously. Uh, you know, look, 19 million, you know, 9 million. I mean, this is legit expensive beyond expensive. You got uh, units for like 4 million bucks. Okay, so what about going to, you know, somewhere not so expensive? Here's the problem. The cheapest towns and the cheapest ski towns in the United States, unfortunately, are going to be on the East Coast. Why? Because the snow is just not as good. It gets icier, it gets colder, and the best ski is really on the West Coast, right? You got Utah, you got uh, Colorado, you got California. Um, and because we have high elevation mountains in this side of the country, and basically uh, <laughs> snow is insane. But I'm gonna show you a little gem that I have found. And the mountain is not the greatest mountain out there. It's called Brian Head. It is a, a little bit of a beginner mountain, but look at this. All of this area right here is ski in, ski out because the lifts basically come right here. And you could basically get a one bedroom, two bath, 800 square foot for $325,000. Again, this is still in Utah. You know it's gonna be great snow. Um, but check that out, right? Like uh, that's a lot more affordable and about the same pr uh, size as, you know, getting a place in Park City. Now, HOA, that they do stiff you with a tough HOA at $400 a month, but you can see a lot more affordable for ski in, ski out, right? If you want to see how close you are, I mean, this is your apartment complex and the lifts are basically right up I think they're behind this complex right here. You could see the lifts come in here. So, you know, it's not the closest walk to the lift, but you know, again, it's still not that cheap, right? 325,000, this is definitely a vacation home. Now I can tell you that with these types of amenities, you could probably rent this out for a hundred, two hundred dollars a night. If it's like good, if the season is good, you could probably rent it out, you know, if there's a lot of snow that season, you could rent it out a lot longer and that could pay for itself, right? Uh, and maybe you can use it from time to time. So again, look at this, there's three units here and look, 168,000 for basically half the amount, uh, half the space, 185,000 for a little, you know, 420 square foot for one bedroom. Here, let's check this out. Uh, I'm actually really liking this one. It's very affordable. They have a meh, 
tiny ass price cut, but it's okay. Again, you're looking for ski in, ski out because ski in, ski out is the most desirable. And you wanna see how close it is to the slopes. Basically, this is where you park and you can ride up here, right? This is the, the mountain right here. Pretty cool. Um, you know, as far as, like I said, as far as affordability, when it comes to ski towns, you're just not going to find it. Now, this is, like I said, Brian Head is a very small mountain. It's a, uh, some say it's a beginner mountain. When you go to Park City, I mean, look at all those lifts. I mean, they don't even put the lifts here on Google Maps, right? But this is, this is the mountain. Uh, but, you know, you go to Park City and you can see it's a whole different ex uh, experience. This is uh, pretty insane. But you know what? At the same time, it is incredibly expensive. Maybe if you look, there's no homes for sale in this area. Uh, let me remove the boundaries. Actually, I'm sorry about that. There is homes for sale. There's a $5 million home here. It's all really, really expensive here. $825,000, one bedroom, two bath, 1,000 square foot. And unfortunately, this is not ski in, ski out. But look at that view, pretty insane. See, the last thing you wanna do when you're on, you know, renting an Airbnb to go skiing is having to get in your car and drive to the mountain, right? If you're gonna be paying, you know, it's worth paying maybe an extra $50 a night, $100 a night to have that privilege because if it starts snowing, you know, you don't wanna be out there driving, right? So getting a place that's ski in, ski out is a must. Uh, here is, for example, like there's a $650,000, ooh, this is just a property, but yeah, wow, just a property is $650,000, but yeah, you want to be as close to these uh, lifts as possible, and look, there's just not even that much for sale. You know, I had no idea, really, I'm, I'm on it, being honest here, that it was going to be this expensive, but I've heard, man, I've heard that the people that live here are the richest of the rich. Look, you know, I'm just trying to find something somewhat affordable and it just doesn't exist. We got, look, uh, seven, yeah, check this one out. 740,000, two bedroom, two bath, a thousand square foot. Not really skiing and ski out, but it looks like it's, uh, it looks like it's a nice little walk to the, to the, to the mountain right here. So, I mean, it's not, you know, I mean, just think about it like this, right? You got all your gear and you got to walk all the way over there. It's going to take you like 30 minutes if it's all full of snow. So that's what, uh, that's why, you know, the farther you are from that lift, the, the cheaper it's going to be and the harder it would be to rent. So just showed you two ski towns. If uh, you know of any other gems, affordable ski towns out there, please comment down below. I would love to hear your perspective. Um, I'd rather, it, you know, rather stay out of the East Coast, you know, only because I think that, uh, as a whole, you would have a better investment in if you invest in ski towns on the West Coast because they're just, you know, they're just a little bit more, uh, they, they're more desired, right? It's uh, sort of like uh, why Hawaii is so expensive um, because of the surf, right? You know, they have great surf, they have great vacations, and it draws a certain crowd. And, you know, that's, that's the draw. That's really the draw. Okay, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this video please go ahead and comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next video.